Welcome to Unit 1, Lesson 1 in our course on Networks and Distributed Systems. The Internet is a computer network that interconnects hundreds of millions of computing devices throughout the world. Not too long ago, these computing devices were mainly traditional desktop PCs and Linux workstations and servers that store and transmit information such as web pages and email messages. Increasingly though, non-traditional end systems such as laptops and smartphones, tablets, TV gaming consoles, webcams, cars, environmental sensing devices, even picture frames. Some home electrical and security systems are all being connected to the internet. Indeed, the term computer network is beginning to sound a little bit old, given the many non-traditional devices that are being hooked to the internet. These devices are referred to as hosts or end systems. According to the website Hosting Facts, there are now 3.74 billion internet users in the world as of March 2017. This is compared to 3.26 billion users in 2016. Asia is the continent with the most internet users. Asia now accounts for 50.1% or more than half of all the internet users in the world. The runner-up is Europe with 17% of all internet users. China has the most internet users of all countries. China currently accounts for more than 25% of the internet users worldwide. The number of people using the internet in China is more than double the population of the United States. As of January 2017, the United Arab Emirates is the country with the highest internet penetration in the world, with an impressive 99% of its citizens, or about 9.2 million people, using the internet. The internet influences sales to the tune of $2.1 trillion in 2016. For the very first time in history, global internet advertising expense is expected to exceed TV advertising expense in 2017. Over 2 million blog posts are published on the internet every day. Over 5.5 billion Google searches are made every day. End systems are connected by a network of communication links and packet switches. There are many types of communication links which are made up of different types of physical media including coaxial cable, copper wire, optical fiber, and radio. Different links can transmit data at different rates with the transmission rate of a link measured in bits per second. When one end system has data to send to another end system, the sending end system segments the data and adds header bytes to each segment. The resulting packages of information, known as packets in the jargon of computer networks, are then sent through the network to the destination end system where they're reassembled into the original data. A packet switch takes a packet arriving on one of its incoming communication links and forwards that packet on one of its outgoing communication links. The two most prominent types of devices in today's internet are routers and link layer switches. Both types of switches forward packets toward their ultimate destination. Link layer switches are typically used in access networks. These are local networks before they connect to the internet. While routers are typically used in the network core, that is along the path from source to destination. The sequence of communication links and packet switches traversed by a packet from the sending end system to the receiving end system is known as a route or a path through the network. A typical message 
sent across the internet may consist of many, many packets. Packet switch networks, which transport packets, are in many ways similar to a transportation network of highways and intersections. Consider, for example, a factory that needs to move a large amount of cargo to some destination warehouse located thousands of miles away. At the factory, the cargo is segmented and loaded into a fleet of trucks. Each of the trucks then independently travels through a network of highways and intersections to the destination warehouse. At the destination warehouse, the cargo is unloaded and grouped with the rest of the cargo arriving from that same shipment. Packets are analogous to trucks. Communication links are analogous to highways. And packet switches are analogous to those intersections. Just as a truck takes a path through the transportation network, a packet takes a path through a communication network. And like those trucks driving from one warehouse to another, individual packets can get to the destination by different routes. Today, almost anything may be connected to the internet. Here are just a few examples. I see a picture frame, <laughs> a web enabled toaster, uh, various internet telephones, sensors of all sorts, a re internet refrigerator, s cable control devices, uh, your lights, your lamps can all be connected to the internet. And now you see often on television commercial for these uh, security devices where, where people are able to watch their house from the beautician. End systems access the internet through internet service providers including the residential internet service providers, such as your local cable company or your telephone company, corporate ISPs, your university network can serve as your ISP. The ISPs that you'll find in airports and hotels, uh, uh, coffee shops, and other public places. Each ISP is in itself a network of packet switches and communication links. ISPs provide a variety of types of network access to the end systems. They also provide internet access to content providers. These are providers that connect websites directly to the internet. Each ISP network, whether upper tiered or lower tiered, is managed independently it runs the internet protocol and conforms to certain naming and addressing conventions. End systems, packet switches, and other pieces of internet run protocols that control the sending and receiving of information within the internet. The transmission control protocol is called, it's usually referred to as TCP. And the Internet Protocol, which is re usually referred to as IP, are two of the most important protocols in the Internet. The IP Protocol specifies the format of packets that are sent and received among routers and end systems. The Internet's principal protocols are collectively known as TCP IP or TCP slash IP. But that's just a start. Much of this course is concerned with computer network protocols. Given the importance of protocols to the internet, it's important that everyone agree on what every protocol does so that people can create systems and products that interoperate. This is where standards come into play. There are a number of different standards in use today that impact internet communication. These include internet standards that are developed by the Internet Engineering Task Force, the ISO International Standards Organization, as well as standards that define the design and configuration of equipment we use, such like IEEE. Our discussion so far has identified many of the pieces that make up the internet. 
but we can also describe the internet from an entirely different angle, namely as an infrastructure that provides services to applications. These applications include things like your email system, your web services, web surfing, Facebook, all sorts of social networks, instant messaging, voice over IP, video streaming. Do you have a Roku? Do you watch uh, Netflix? Games are being distributed. And then there's peer-to-peer -peer file sharing applications. Television is available over the internet and remote login services to other systems. Those are all possible. These applications are said to be distributed applications since they involve multiple end systems that exchange data with each other. Importantly, internet applications run on end systems. An internet communication between two hosts may pass over many links through a great many intermediate devices. So when we say end systems, we are talking about the hosts at each end of all those connected links. That's the end system. How does a program running on one end system instruct the internet to deliver data to another program running on another end system? End systems attached to the internet provide an application programming interface. API is what it's referred to as. And this API specifies how a program running on one end system asks the internet infrastructure to deliver data to a specific destination running on another end system. This internet API is a set of rules that the sending program must follow so that the internet can deliver the data to the destination program. We've just been given two examples of the internet. One in terms of its hardware and software components, the other in terms of its infrastructure for providing services to distributed applications. Now that's a good start for us on this series of lectures. Why don't we take a break right now, review your notes a little bit, and we'll get back together when you're ready to go for another round.